Hey guys, hope everybody out there is doing well today. Uh, I wanted to share with you some things that I do at home while I'm not out hiking and traveling, uh, which is kind of what I set this blog vlog up to do. Um, that's why I gave it the name Homemade Wanderlust because I'm always kind of working on some project at the house or whatever. And then when I get the chance to run away and go hike, I absolutely do that. So um, today I'm going to talk to y'all a little bit about a composter that I built and uh, my microgreens business that I'm just kind of starting to dabble in. Um, but of course, you know, I'd love to be out on the trail every day if I could. That's not possible, but I have things going on here that kind of keep me entertained <laughs> while well, I'm saving up to go on my next journey, but it's always on my mind, you know, hence the t-shirt. But anyway, so for those of you who are wanting to see hiking only, I've got a trip coming up to North Carolina in about a week, uh, first weekend of February. So um, stay tuned for that because I'll be filming while I'm up there, you know, videoing some things. And uh, for those of y'all who are like-minded in the area of, you know, homesteading, then check out this video because I'm going to show you my composter in just a minute. Um, but I just wanted to say, you know, in this time in society and the country and whatever, I, I just feel like personal liberty and freedom is very important to hold on to. And one of the ways that I feel like you can be free in your own life is to provide things for yourself. So don't be dependent on grocery stores or, you know, whatever else. Um, so one of the things that I like to do is garden and to compost and provide food for myself. So uh, I'll be doing some videos on different projects I have going on. But anyway, let's get to that compost. Alrighty, so these are my composters. Uh, I used to have three of them, but when I was moving from Colorado, somebody decided they wanted one more than I did while they were sitting out by the U-Haul to be packed away. So one of them got stolen. But anyway, um, I want to say that they're about $15 each, just the, the black trash can um, from Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, I think it's like 55 gallon maybe. Um, I mean, you'll, you'll see them there. But anyhow, it's as simple as that. Um, and then you just make some adjustments to it, which I will show you. But composting is very simple. All you do is you have a mixture of browns and greens. So browns are like dead leaves and um, dried uh, grass clippings and stuff like that, which is what I have here that were donated to me. And then these are some greens. Actually, that is collard greens in that plastic bag. And in the plastic jug, I've got pulp from where I make juices from uh, vegetables and fruits. So your greens, which are your nitrogens or anything from like I guess fresh grass clippings to um, vegetable peeling and waste and stuff like that, uncooked, like raw vegetables where you cut the ends of your asparagus or anything like that. And then your browns are, um, you know, dried, uh, basically dried leaves. Um, pe some people compost like newspapers and things like that. So that's your carbons. It's carbons, nitrogens, browns, greens. And you just mix those, they heat up and create a wonderful black gold that is compost. So let's get into building the composters. So in my opinion, the, the best thing to do is make three of these, um, and I'll explain why at the end. But anyway, um, I think it cost me about $60 to make all three, or somewhere in that range. So you'll have three trash cans. Uh, I think these sticks of drain pipe come in 10 feet increments. Um, so one of those. And then to be on the safe side, maybe six feet of PVC. I believe this is three quarter inch. Um, there's really no science behind it. So anywhere like inch to a half inch or so, you'll probably be good. Um, but anyway, the first thing I did was either with a hole saw or a drill bit, you know, three quarter inch, same size as your PVC, drill holes all in the bottom of your cans. And then about, you know, a couple inches from the bottom. Um, and then around the top all the way around um, and basically on the bottom is so that the microbes that help break down your stuff and turn it into compost uh, can get you know up from the ground into it and then the other holes are for ventilation because this stuff does heat up and that's how it breaks down so anyway then you're gonna take your drain pipe and you want it to stand in your can so that you can see you know, it doesn't go all the way to the top. Um, so, you know, measure it out about like that. And of course it's gonna be the same for all three. There's my big helper. 
all right so anyway <clears throat> this drain pipe here comes with holes um down one side and then turn about a third of the way it's got them down another side so you want to turn about a third of the way and put them down that side too see they're not perfect it's just basically for ventilation um but anyway uh and these this is the same size as you know the hole i drilled on the sides of the can so um all right so yeah this will be your standpipe down inside your uh composter acting as a chimney so the material heats up goes the the heat goes through the holes and rises of course when the heat rises you want air to continue to flow through so to create kind of like a suction or whatever uh we're going to use a this section of pvc going to stick it through one of the holes down in the bottom on the side and then in through this drain pipe okay so you can see how i've got it stuck through one of the holes there and then it's going to go through like that bottom hole there so that's the only thing you really need to pay attention to to maybe the level that you do it at um, but it's not extremely vital but anyway you'll notice that the section there at the end of the pvc has holes in it and it is drilled all the way around on on four sides um, and it's only going to you're only going to drill holes in the part that goes in this drain pipe here because you want the air to suck through that solid part and then go through the holes there and up here so yeah heat rises right and as it rises it's going to create a suction to help aerate your material that you have in here okay so when you get it put together it should look like this you want to have about that much sticking out you know it doesn't have to be completely um plumb with the trash can or anything you know it doesn't really matter um but anyway as you can see solid pvc there into the drain pipe and down in the hole there you can see the holes in the pvc i don't remember what size bit i used but the size of the bit doesn't you know really matter that much um anyway it should look about like that and again all four sides <laughs> if you want to call it sides of the circle but anyway um so that's basically all you do uh as far as preparation to your cans and this is one that i already have set up hank quit grazing thinks he's a cow so this is one i've already got set up that's in use and you will see leaves on the inside so i have layers in here and uh you know works best if you crush up these eggshells but you know whatever it ends up working anyway um, but you can see some uh, juice pulp down in there. Um, and also, just a side note, egg shells are very good to crush up, crush up, crush up, crush up, very small, and plant in with your tomatoes when you plant your tomatoes in your garden because they help prevent blossom end rot. So just a pointer for any of you that have ever experienced that. And if you don't know what a blossom end rot is, it's where you have your tomatoes and they start um, rotting kind of on the bottom and you're like, I don't know what I did. It's just blossom and rot, and that's a calcium deficiency. So by crushing up eggshells, you put calcium in the soil, and voila, it helps prevent it. But anyway, so let's see what goodness I have in here in this tub. Um, I compost, like I said, juice pulp, coffee grounds, and the filter. Um, I put in eggshells. I put in loose leaf tea, you know, like the used loose leaf tea. Um, so anyway, you just kind of sprinkle it out, spread it out evenly. You don't want your compost too wet. You don't want it soaked, and mine might be a little bit too wet. That's why you see little fruit flies flying out. Um, we've had a lot of moisture here in Alabama. Um, and you don't want it too dry because then there's not enough moisture in there and enough nitrogen and everything to keep your microbes going. But not exact science. You'll figure it out, and you just have to go for it. You just have to get stuff done and try it. You know, just get on a ledge and do it. So anyway... That's basically the gist of it. If y'all have any questions, just comment below. Okay, so the reason I say it's best to do three of these is, well, I mean, two will work fine, but you're basically gonna have all the supplies you need. Um, you're gonna have enough drain pipe for three, so you at least need two, but uh, in my opinion. Um, the reason is the easiest thing to do, you have to turn compost. So it starts breaking down, starts breaking down. I normally fill this until it gets to somewhere around that line there and then I pull out my PVC from the bottom pull out this drain pipe and then literally dump this can 
into this one so that acts as my turning process and then it'll go through another heating cycle and then if you have a third one you can dump it from the second one into that one and you kind of keep it going um, and then you know that way it's all contained it's right here you know you don't have a big old pile just you know leaching all your nutrients out everywhere it's like contained and you know ready to go in your third can or your second can you know just however you want to do it you'll you'll figure it out but all right so hank and i have shared our extra special secret composter design with you so don't wait uh i made this work for me in colorado when everyone said you're stupid for trying to compost in the middle of winter time and i had lovely black compost ready for my garden in the spring so just start now just go ahead and go to lowe's it's a good project for the winter anyway and you know it may be a slower process but at least you're doing some <laughs> but anyway okay so an update on my microgreens luckily thanks to brandon i have some new outlets in my house and uh, one of these rooms in here, either my bedroom, and I'm going to move my bedroom to back there, or that room back there will be my microgreens room. Uh, my business is going to be called Millhouse Microgreens because this house is my grandparents' old mill house. They worked at the mill in Opelika their whole lives, and uh, they bought this house a little bit at a time. So anyway, it's special to me. It's got a special meaning to me. Um, but anyway, so it's going to be in here, in the house, and uh, it's in a, like a four by eight growing space-ish, uh, and I'll show you what I have in so far. So, so far I've gotten in my timer, which will put light on my greens for a certain amount of time. I've gotten in these lovely light fixtures, and my bulbs. These are the bulbs that will give life to my greens. <laughs> so that's it so far. That's what I've gotten in. All right, well, that's it for now. Uh, hopefully this weekend I'm gonna get some shelving built for my microgreens. And I, like I said, I'm gonna keep y'all tuned in on that process. So, process. so if any of y'all are interested in growing your own microgreens or starting a microgreens business also, you can kind of see how it goes for me. And uh, I hope the composter tutorial was useful and get y'all composting and kind of doing your share to uh, minimize waste in landfills and to provide wonderful compost for your house plants or garden if you enjoy gardening. And uh, stay tuned because I've got some traveling adventures coming up in North Carolina within two weeks. So see y'all later. Okay, so I am here at Amicalola uh, State Park and I am about to hike the approach trail. I uh, just weighed my pack in and Sign the register.